So tell us about, you mentioned BIPOC. Um, yeah. Tell us about that organization, how it came about, and what you guys are all about. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked me that. Um, so we were founded in June of 2020. We had our first meeting in May, um, shortly after George Floyd passed away. Um, you know, the adult industry, like everybody else, was going through their Black Lives Matter moment. Uh, so many performers were in the streets marching right alongside, you know, other folks <laughs> behind the the constant um, murder of, of of black people by mm -hmm. law enforcement. And, you know, as, as other industries were also coming out on social media, talking about racism in their industry, the porn industry had its moment too. Um, we quickly saw people, you know, companies issuing their Black Lives Matter statements. Um, you know, there were companies who donated money to like the Movement for Black Lives or the Obama Foundation. And, you know, I saw that there were, you know, you know, ABN had, had scheduled a closed door meeting and expos had like a town hall. And for me, I was, and then I saw, I think Fleshlight had, um, had um, Anna and Misty on a live to talk about racism in the industry. And I just was getting so angry and frustrated because I felt like, you know, this is not the first time that we've had this conversation mm -hmm. about racism. I mean, these conversations have been happening since the seventies and it, I was so afraid that the people who were speaking out were only going to be listened to while everybody was in lockdown and there was no one working and that the minute people would go back to work, those people might be blackballed or they would just, you know, it would go back to status quo. And so I, I thought that this was a really good opportunity to pull people together so that we could have a united front about the types of, of top-down changes we wanted to see in the industry. And I also invited in, um, you know, not only Black performers, but, but other performers of color, understanding that there are if, if the Asian performers have to wait their turn for a moment, it's never going to happen. Like, there's mm -hmm. not enough of them in the business. Or if Latinx performers have to wait their turn, it's never going to happen because there's not enough of them. Mm -hmm. And so um, we had a meeting ahead of the first Expos Town Hall to think about everything that really needs to change and voted on some things that we wanted to include in a statement. Um, there were some things that were harder to push through than others because people have such spirited, um, you know, opinions of them. And, and we put out a statement and, you know, we attended these meetings, you know, after the, after the industry went back to work, many of the mainstream performers did not return, but a lot of the other, like, you know, online workers who, you know, stayed and we've been really building, we, we knew right away we needed to build something that was going to be comprehensive and, and include, you know, especially because we were also in lockdown. Um, you know, there were people who wanted to strike and, um, Shine Louise Houston uh, mentioned that it's really hard to ask people to strike when you have people who don't know how they're going to feed their families mm -hmm. and or keep a roof over their head in the middle of what was what was still early in the pandemic. Um, and Jet Setting Jasmine agreed that, you know, we have to be able to put money in people's pockets. And so we decided to start fundraising so that we could at least try to give people some money to be able to sustain themselves um, during lockdown. Mm -hmm. And immediately we, we also decided to create some wraparound services. So Jasmine offered to set aside an hour every week um, for a support group, um, a stress management support group. Um, Courtney Trouble immediately jumped in and offered to help pay for our free online yoga classes so that we could offer people virtual yoga. We hired sex workers who were certified yoga instructors. We wanted to make sure that at every step of the way that we were able to put money in the pockets of sex workers. Um, we also decided to do some educational programming because it's different. Like my experience as a black performer online is totally different than a cis het white female performer's experience online, the things that she might share that work for her may not work for me simply because of race and, and are the demographics of our, of our followers and our fans and the psychology behind why they're interested in, in our content also. And so we decided to 
um, offer peer-led education to help sex workers not get out of the business, but to make money in the business. And, you know, drawing from our pool of very talented, you know, Black and Indigenous and people of color in the, in the business on how they navigate this work. And every, we've offered everything from cybersecurity to you know, like, you know, social media marketing, um, navigating this work as, you know, a queer or neural, you know, queer person in, a, you know, in a heteronormative industry. Um, we've done things around legislation and contracts and just, just so much stuff just to be able to offer people both hard and soft skills to navigate the industry. Um, but since then, like, like almost immediately we saw, I mean, I think the first year we had 344 people ask for money. And we were able to raise twenty thousand dollars. We gave sixteen thousand of that directly to sex workers who needed, who applied for financial assistance. We paid yoga instructors. We were able to get um, pineapple support to cover the cost of, you know, of Jasmine's, um, you know, offering the, the the support group. She was the first person to to get money because I felt like that was just so important. And I'm like, I didn't want her to continue to offer her services for free because I'm like, you are also a marginalized sex worker, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, and I'm like, I wanted to make sure that she was able to continue that work um, because it's necessary um, for our, you know, for our people. And, and so we've been doing this now, we're going on our third year. Wow. So last year we really had to sit down and we kind of had to work backwards and we set up our corporate structure. We got a fiscal sponsor, set up a bank account, started doing you know, started doing grant writing mm -hmm. so that we could raise more money. Um, and and this year, we're actually right now, we're in the process of um, selecting 10 BIPOC sex workers who have expressed that they're in need of one-to-one of -one therapy. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be funding 10 people. Uh, we're looking to offer um, 10, we have 21 people total who have requested, who, who have mentioned that they also need to access therapy. So we're looking to raise another $11,000 this year just to clear those books so that we can give all of, we're doing this work in partnership with Pineapple Support where, you know, cause we, we don't have the capacity to expand that way, but we do have the capacity to fundraise and give the money to someone who is doing that work. And so like everything that we've been doing has really stemmed from the needs that people are expressing to us that they have. Like mm -hmm. our legal advisor, is a mental health attorney, and she is just phenomenal. She also um, is very is out about living with bipolar disorder. And the very first time we met, she was like, well, you know, what kind of services do you think that sex workers need? And I'm like, let me tell you what we need. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, let me tell you, let me give you the rundown. It's not just about, you know, about the, you know, intellectual property. Like people really have a lot of needs. And, mm -hmm. you know, we never wanted to have people give us a reason why they needed the money. We want people to be able to determine, self-determine what they need. But immediately people were very open about what their needs were. Right. And we saw a lot of housing insecurity a lot of food insecurity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people often, you know, in that first year, everybody was like, diversify, diversify, diversify. But, you know, for the people who came to us like, seeking financial support, they were already on like five or six platforms and not making enough money mm -hmm. to house themselves. And so, you know, we've been just this slowly thinking through like, what are the most urgent needs that people have been asking about um, one of our goals the next three years is to launch a domestic violence program. We've earmarked funds currently so that when people contact us um, looking to escape violence, that we can give them money. Um, but we've been very intentional. Like we see a lot of student sex workers. We've partnered with Sex Workers Project to do some research on sex working students. We'll be working with UCSB um, to their, their do, they have research money to be able to help us with this research on sex working students so that we can try to give some folks some help. But we've just been so fortunate and so lucky that to start this organization when we did, mm -hmm. that we were able to, you know, to, to collaborate with some really powerful people who have been doing amazing work for decades yeah. and, you know, to be able to get the help and the support that we need so we can yeah. make lasting change.